So we screwed up. We are totally screwed up, you know? We just don't know how to pick the good. And St. Paul today says, in the letter of the Romans, no? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Why? What would it make the difference? Because I'm in a position, I don't know how to choose the good. I don't know how to live. So, how does this all make a difference? Let's read Romans 8. Because there is the whole difference about what we're going to talk today. What we're going to do in this second talk is just let St. Paul talk. With the uh, cements that we have just put to understand what's going on in this heart, what's this identity, now we have to know what the Father did for us to recover. And it starts like this. Hence, now there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. First thing, important. Okay, you screwed up. But he didn't come here to blame you. I think it's enough penance just choosing smaller things. It's enough. So whenever you're just like dying there, he's not gonna come and go like this. He didn't come for that. By the way, the only thing he did was defend you night and day. If you see the public sinner in the front of the plaza, everyone with stones like this going, do you know what's to have Jesus standing there and saying, I didn't come here to do this. We're not here for that. We're here to be saved. No? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed you from the law of sin and death. Okay, what does that mean? These are the two laws, okay? Law of sin and death is to realize through what he wants from me, my beloved father wants the good. What's the good? To know the Ten Commandments. But that make me realize I sin, which is I don't choose the good, the bigger gift. And at the same time, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. I don't live. I have to mask, no? And what is the law of the spirit of life? I would like to distinguish between spirit and spirit. Okay. Spirit is Holy Spirit. Spirit is heart. This is very important. Um, spirit in capital letter is the Holy Spirit, is the love of God. Spirit in small letters is what we call the center of the soul, of our soul. The center, like we call it the heart. No, when you ever say, I love you with all my heart, it would be the same as saying, I love you with all my spirit. So when St. Paul says, the spirit of God comes to our spirit and gives the same testament. I'm like, what? What spirit? It's like saying, the love of God comes to my heart, which is different. So we're going to see the difference between the law of sin and death and the law of the love of God. To realize the difference, no? So, For the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed you from the law of sin and death. Which is this law? This law is this. For law weakened by the flesh was powerless to do. This God has done. Which means 
to understand the Ten Commandments by my weakness, I understand I never choose the bigger gift. That's why we're here, right? Because we don't choose the Ten Commandments all the time. I'm so weak that I cannot choose that. But, this God has done, this Father of ours has done. How? He says, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for the sake of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the righteous decree of the law might be fulfilled in us, who live not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What does that mean? It means he sent his Son so that you knew here how to choose the bigger gift and not the smaller good. So in Jesus, when he comes, he tells us, okay, now in me you will see how to choose. Now in me you will understand a bigger dignity that doesn't depend on the opinion of the Pharisees, that doesn't depend on how well you fulfill laws, as just Valentina told us. Not very good, very instrument, very instrument, but those very good instruments, when Jesus came, didn't even recognize him. So it's a very, very important thing to try to know how can I choose my dignity? I have to see the most amazing of all mankind with this. Jesus taking flesh, being true God and true man, how he receives from the Father the good. So, he lets himself be loved by his Father by wanting the good that the Father gave him. Here is my child, my beloved one. Listen to him, right? Because he's going to tell you how much I love you. How much it makes sense to follow. Even if you're so afraid that you don't even want to choose the bigger gift. Because it's not always comfortable to choose the bigger gift. Because people are so afraid of not having the truth that are going to try to pull you down. We have a saying in Spain that says, eh, but of a multitude is the consolation of the stupid people. Which means, <laughs> eh, if I do something wrong eh, and I convince others to do the same, then I feel better because it's not only me, the one who's stupid, but I'm in a stupid crowd. No? <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> This is the problem, that when we try to live and pick bigger things, people start envying. And that envy means the people who are truly, absolutely bitter and says, no, no, if I don't live, you're not going to live either. Does anyone understand why they hated so much our Lord? Why, they, why did they hate him so much? He just went around healing people. I hate you because you did that on Saturday. You know, you did it wrong. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Saturday, we got the perfect excuse perfect excuse because you're terrified that he might lead to true life you have a problem that we want to have everything so under control that we also want to control that love because we think we have the knowledge of the good and the bad that's the original sin right that's why we are never satisfied that's why pride is so dangerous because it doesn't let us live and the mask of pride is always fear. A prideful person is always afraid. Always. 
because the intuition of your spirit, of your deep heart, tells you it's a lie what you're living. It's a lie. You're not that fulfilled. So, for those who live according to the flesh are concerns with the things of the flesh. Let's do a cue for the iPhone 8. Oh, Star Wars is coming. No? Look, I'm a fan of Star Wars, okay? It's not bad. It's just inconvenient to live my life through Jedi's. <laughs> because it's not true. But it's wonderful going there with friends and seeing that film, okay? Understand me while it's the convenience. You cannot put that on such a height, no? It's because the other day we went to to do some, uh, I don't know how you call it? Segway. Segway. And, and the guy had a tattoo of a Star Wars thing. And I'm like, okay. Uh, great. But you're more. Anyhow. Um, the concern of the flesh is death, but the concern of the spirit is life and peace. Do you know how to discern whether it comes from God or not, because you grow in personality, in freedom, and in capacity of loving. You are more you than ever. Do you know what's holiness? To be more you than ever. It's having the properties of God inside of you. Do you know what's the properties of God inside of you? You are my beloved son. I won't change you for anything. Would a father change his son to make him be something else? Even if it's the ugliest uh, little baby in the world, their parents think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this child is so funny. <laughs> but love says that's the most beautiful thing in the world. Because love sits much deeper, no? So it's a very important thing, this. Are you growing in freedom, personality, and capacity of loving? Because if not, it's leading you to death. You're choosing something that's smaller than you. That's why it doesn't allow you to grow. It's not talking well about you. And we tried so hard through pride that that thing, finally, we control it so that it gives us the, what we're looking for. I tried it when I was five years old, saying, okay, when I have this candy bag, I will be the most happy person in the world. And I was pretty good by convincing my parents, but I had a candy bag every day and it didn't work. Then I thought, no, 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 it was the bicycle, sorry. That's what it's gonna make me truly happy forever. Sorry, the bicycle and nothing else. And the bicycle didn't work either. Neither the car, neither the house. Am I bad made? No, by the way, this looks for infinite. That's why it's not going to stop. No, the day you're two centimeters taller, it's not going to work. No. The day you weigh 100 pounds less, it's not going to work. If you don't know how to love yourself with 100 pounds more, do not worry. You're not going to learn how to love yourself with 100 pounds less. Because that's not the problem. That's the law of death. To truly believe that that's your only good. Do you see how this work, the world works? Do you truly think you're going to be a happier family with one more room in the house? What for? So that you can lock your child there so that he doesn't bother you? Seriously? These are things that when I came here to California the first time, like four years ago, I've never seen such a loneliness. 
I, I was scared. I was truly scared because everyone has my own room, my own house, my own car, my, 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 my. And when I'm perfectly content with my, I'm perfectly alone. And since I have everything to use, I sell myself. And this is terrible because of course I need you. I need to be loved. And I need to love. Of course I need you. And if I think it's just something more I have to achieve until I have until I find someone who is a best seller than me and can buy me. Are you kidding me? Don't you understand that's the law of death? Don't you understand you cannot sell yourself? It's not about that. But it's not comfortable loving. It's getting out of the sofa. Mm -hmm. The concern of the flesh is death. But the concern of the spirit is life and peace. For the concern of flesh is hostility towards God. All of a sudden, I don't know why, but when I have everything, and when I think I know that I control my life, I start hating God. In a way that I don't understand. Why do people hate God? No? There was a very special thing I, I saw <laughs> in Spain when the Pope was coming. There was a balcony that said, uh, Pope Benedict, we are not waiting here for you. And I thought, who would ever spend money in buying a spray, a, sh a sheet or a blanket to put in the balcony to say that? Yeah. I mean, if Madonna is coming to Spain, yeah. I'll never get a spray and say, you're not welcome here, Madonna. Sure. Why? Because it hurts. Because it hurts that life. Because it makes me understand I'm dead. This is very important. No? And so, it does not submit the flesh to the law of God, nor can it. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay. If we still believe we want and we know how to please ourselves, it's impossible to fulfill the law, the law of God. Impossible. You cannot fulfill the commandments. You will be burned out in a church. And the perfect excuse is blaming the priest. <gasps> Look, he doesn't entertain me. Look, oh, no, that pastor is better. No, maybe, because I saw a TV program in which there's this wonderful music here and then uh, art uh, fireworks here and that's it. Go ahead. But that boring priest there, when he says, Behold the Lamb of God, <laughs> is bringing you your only good. That's a difference. And that makes a big of a difference. So, you who are not in the flesh, on the contrary, you're in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. Whoever does not allow the Holy Spirit enter in his heart, it's not possible. Because, but if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of the righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised God from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised in Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers, we are not debtors of the flesh to live according to the flesh. If you not live according to the flesh, you will die, but if you but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. I have never seen anyone capable of fulfilling the commandments of God by his own strength. Did you ever try it? 
did, I did this when I was very small. Did you ever try to spend a whole day without sinning? It's like, don't touch me. Don't look at me. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> but if I don't touch you and, and I don't look at you, then I will sin of uh, not helping you. So, uh, uh. What a, and that's the scrupulosity then comes. And, and then you get people who say, okay, I went to Mass this morning, but what else have I got to do? Then I have to fulfill, 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 fulfill. That's death. I have never seen anyone through his own will who can fulfill this. Neither I have seen anyone that through good ideas could fulfill the commandments. Okay. Pastoral program. It's going to be like this. My life is going to be like this. And then my wife will answer me correctly then, finally. And then it's going to be this way. Forget about it. Welcome to the real world. Neither I have seen anyone being able to fulfill the commandments hating himself. Hatred is a power, it's a big power, no? But you cannot be day and night blaming yourself. I did it again, I'm stupid, I'm sin again, I'm a sinner and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. We come here to tell you what you're not. And it's very important to understand this. You cannot live a life eternally guilty because the devil is called the blamer. Day and night, he's trying to convince you that you're rubbish. That's not the way the Father talks to you. So the only way to fulfill commandments I have ever seen is through love. That's the only power that can arise you. So St. Paul is saying here, will you let Jesus put the Holy Spirit in you? Will you let Jesus put all the love of the Father inside of you? Will you be brave enough as to live through love? Because if not, the Ten Commandments make no sense. It's like, um, Falling in love for dummies, no? That book. <laughs> so, if you're in love, you will notice it because you will stand under a window of your beloved for two hours, then you will see her cross, and while she cross, you'll go, ah, it was worth it. And you leave. Yes, you are in love. But first comes the love, and then that commandment to stay under that window for two hours. If you do it the other way around, okay, you have to fall in love. Okay, I have to fall in love. I have to be behind this window for two hours. <laughs> you say, girl, call me and say, okay, I have to convince myself it was worth it. It was worth it. I'm burned out of being in, behind this. Do you, I don't know if I'm expressing myself, but first fall in love and then the commandments of the things you would do when you fall in love come easily. First, let your father love you. Take this love to be able to choose bigger things because if not, you won't feel that you're worth of something bigger and you will never choose bigger things. When uh, in the Testimony of Valentina, when did she chose bigger things and quitted the people who chose smaller things just when she found herself being loved? For those who are led by the Spirit of love of God are children of God. They're the true ones who are in love. No? For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoptions through which we cry, Abba, Father. All of a sudden, I realize that it's the Father who loves me. 
all of a sudden I realize I belong. All of a sudden I understand that to fulfill this law that only reminds me that I'm choosing small things is if I know about my dignity. And if I know the Father loves me, I mean the creator of all these things, who will stop me? But if I try to win that love by being uh, down looking at a window and trying to fall in love by looking at two, for two hours, it's not going to work. Do you know what the Father did to call us? He sent his son. Will you believe me? When I sacrifice my only son, how much I love you. Will you hear him and see how he fulfills my will to give the good for you? Would you understand how good his life was? How worth living it? Even if it's not the most comfortable one? Would you understand that you can choose the biggest gift in the middle of hell? Of the worst situation in the world? Because what did he do? He put his only son in the worst scenario possible to tell us even there you have the dignity to choose the best, the biggest gift, the huge good. Do you know what was that good he chose? Forgiveness. Forgiveness for us. Saying, even in the worst situation, you can choose to live through forgiveness. What is this spirit of God telling you? You are my beloved child. You belong. You are untouchable. You have a biggest dignity. Even though it will take you a while to understand it. I realize this because uh, once I have a, a, a married couple, friend of mine, they adopted a child from IT after this terrible hurricane and earthquake. No? And it was really interesting because they told me, when he came home, we had to lock the kitchen. And we had to lock the kitchen for a year. Because he was so used not to eat, and he was so concerned about that good, that every time the kitchen was open, we found him. That he was throwing up, because he ate so much, that he did didn't know how to handle the kitchen, no? So we had to lock the kitchen first. What does that mean? We had to lock the smaller good, which was the kitchen, for him to understand that now he belonged, he had parents. Sometimes God, when he gives us a cross, he has to lock the kitchen for us to understand that we truly belong. I have seen people dying in cancer, saying, why do I realize this right now and not before? I am the happiest person in the world. I had a couple of friends, uh, he died last year, who told me, I don't understand why this came right now, but I could tell you, I have never loved my wife like this. And is it possible for me, is it like legal for me to say that in this situation there is beauty? I said, of course. There's the beauty of choosing bigger things, which is choosing to be loved and to love, to choose immortality. In a way, it was fascinating. He told me, okay, I just have one last question. How is my paternity going to be in heaven? He had two little boys, two-year-olds. 
How is my paternity going to be in heaven? That's the only question I have right now. So, being with them was a true gift. You could see how they were growing and growing. First, they had to go through the taboo of, no, I don't want to scare you. No, I don't want to, we don't want to talk about cancer in this house. Then it was beautiful. There was a moment in which uh, we came into a point in which I told them, okay, I married you. I was a witness. And I heard you say, in the good and in the bad, in the wealth and in the sickness, you have been given the good and the wealth. I want to see how you both give the, the bad and uh, the sickness. And all of a sudden I saw both grabbing the hand just like the day of their marriage and saying, my beloved husband, I give you my, my, my fears. I'm so scared. My beloved wife, today I don't feel good and I don't want to, uh, to bother you because I'm scared to give you my sickness. My beloved uh, husband, I knew it, and I didn't even want to bother you either just in case, but I knew that there was something wrong today. And pa 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 choosing the good, choosing the good, choosing the good, and seeing how this is bigger than a cancer. Going through all of those states. So the last day, he asked me this. And it was beautiful because I asked him, okay, you will have to help me here. You have been knowing how love goes over sickness, over taboos, over a, a moment in which you doubt that even if it got, God existed. And now we are in the last stage. You will have to help me from heaven to tell your wife that love is bigger than death. Can you help me here? He only could say yes or no, he said, yes. And I said, okay, your parenthood is solved. Because if you give that love from heaven, for sure that love will stay in your wife and it will be transmitted to your kids. We have just resolved that problem. And he starts. And the wife starts, are you okay? But aren't you afraid? No. But what do you feel? He could only say yes or no because it was a brain cancer, no? and he, it didn't allow him to speak. And he said, peace. This is it. But we have to choose it today. Because if we don't know that we're going to die, we will don't know how to live today. If we don't know that this is too weak to hold even the law of God, and we don't need this be absolutely trespassed by the love of God, where would I find the strength to stand up? Truly. Shall I continue, like Valentina said, with my beautiful smile, entertaining you? Buy a monkey. <laughs> and leave me alone. <laughs> it's an insult to your freedom. It's such an insult. But if the Spirit of God comes into my heart, and I can say, Abba, I will be able to say it forever during the whole eternity. But if we don't know where to belong, I will keep on looking in the trash cans to try to find something to eat. Just like that poor Haiti boy who still didn't believe he had a father and they had to lock that kitchen because he still was choosing the smaller gift, choose the smaller good. That's to sin. 
What is, is all this retreat about? Uh, it's to understand this. If God is with us, who will stand against us? He who not spared his own son, but handed him over us all, how will he not also give us everything else with him? Who will be against you? A cancer? Someone else's opinion? The way you fulfill the law? Come on. Quit it. You belong. You have a father. Then you will say, who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised also at the right hand of the God, who indeed inter intercedes for us. What will separate us from this love of the Father? The anguish, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness? No. In all of these things, we truly conquer, because neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, no powers, no height or death, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Father sent his only son to say, what else do you need? To realize that I will never leave you alone. What else do you need? Well, if you need anything else, get bored there, and whenever you're ready, <coughs> don't blame God. Not even blame yourself, because it's not fair. It's too much. But ask your father, Abba, I'm ready. San Alfonso Maria Ligorio said, whenever you say Mary, she says Jesus. No? Whenever we say Jesus, he says Abba. That's his only will. His only will through the whole scriptures is do my father when you go to pray lock your door and when you lock the door of your room there pray to your father and the father that da, 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 da. lord teach us how to pray okay our father Father, I thank you because you have hidden these things to the wise and, and you have showed it to the small ones. Father, let them be one just like we, you and I are one. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. When you get this, <laughs> also your heart stops. Abba, Abba. And it becomes not only the fathers, because it's impossible. The father is so humble that whenever you want to know him, it has to be through Christ. It becomes trinitary. Because then you say, okay, I want to know the father. How to know the father? How to know to choose the good, the real gift, no? How to choose the bigger good? I only know how to do that through Jesus. So it's like, okay, father, I want to know you. The only way to know you is through Jesus. Jesus, tell me how you love him. But th that relationship, it's such a big love that I need the Holy Spirit. So, which is the Father between you both. So please, get me inside there. Show me how to live. Uh, give me what I need because I don't know how to do this. I'm convinced also, I need to feed myself in that kitchen and do nothing else. I'm convinced when I come to church that I have to be... Uh, faking that I am in love and I still don't know you and it's not my fault that I don't know you I try to be good but I'm just so prideful and so afraid of not being loved that I still don't believe you can love this because I don't know how to do it learn it's 
start over. Go ahead. But stop faking. Or buy a monkey. Because it cannot be. This is too precious. It's something too big. Your life is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? Wherever the Father wants to put all the love is just inside of you. And then who will separate you from that? And there, the way your mother-in-law looks at you, not only it wouldn't be that important, it will make you feel compassion of her. And you will start knowing how to talk with her without being afraid of the swords she's throwing. That iPhone would still be great, but it would be well used. It wouldn't take all of your time. The way you look yourself at the mirror will change. It wouldn't be like, oh, you again. <laughs> it would be, seriously? That much love? <laughs> seriously, you want me to be me? Well, surprise me today. And surprise me especially because if I know I'm a son, this is my family. And I didn't even realize today it was in California. I thought it was in Spain. Because I was in my family. And you don't know for me what it meant these days in my Polish family here with Philip and Justina. They opened their house. I mean, I could. Try to raise fundraise for Chalice of Mercy in other ways. <laughs> but that's something very important also what Valentina said. This is not about fundraise. Because if it's about fundraise, it's cheap stuff. You will choose the smaller good. You know what it would be? Just letting your conscience count because I'll give a couple of hundreds and uh, it was beautiful. You entertained me. This is not the zoo. <laughs> this is serious stuff. It's about your life, not about me. And please, if you're thinking, what a pity that my husband is not here or this person, forget it, it's for you. That's a trick. It's for you. And until it's not for you, it's for anyone else. So please, claim Abba with us. And, and help me because I need to be loved here. I, I don't know. I'm a very small priest. I don't know how to live this. And, and I make so many mistakes. No? But I choose a bigger one, a bigger good, which is forgiveness. So let us finish praying and thanking God for entering a little bit more in what to belong to this amazing Father means. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, forgive us sinners.